great love involves the cruel thoughts of killing, the object of love, so that it may be removed once and for all from the mischievous play of change. For love is more afraid of change than of destruction. The source of great love. Whence arises the sudden passion of a man for a woman. A passion so deep, so vital. Least of all from sensuality only. But when a man finds weakness, need of help and high spirits united in the same creature, he suffers a sort of overflowing of soul and is touched and offended at the same moment. At this point, taking side against ourselves. Our followers never forgive us for taking side against ourselves. Anakri feared phosphorus, napalm or nothing feared but to look inward to see that twisted mind that lies beneath the surface of all humans and to say yes I accept you I even love you because you're a part of me you're an extension of me to will the good and be capable of the beautiful It is not enough to practice the good. One must have willed it. And as the poet says, include the Godhead in our will. But the beautiful, we must not will. We must be capable of it. In innocence, blindness without any psychical curiosity he that lights his lantern to find perfect men should remember the token by which to know them they are the men who always act for the sake of the good and in so doing always attain to the beautiful but without thinking of the beautiful Many better and noble men from importance or from want of beauty in their souls remain unrefreshing and ugly to behold with all their goodwill and good works. They rebuff and injure even virtue through a repulsive garb in which their bad taste to rise her. Danger of renunciation. Shame. Shame exists everywhere. Where there is a mystery. This, however, is a religious idea which was widely extended in the older times of human civilization. Everywhere were found bounded domains to which access was forbidden by divine right, except under certain circumstances and conditions. 
at first locally as for example certain spots that ought to not be trodden by the feet of the uninitiated in the neighborhood of which these latter experienced horror and fear this feeling was a good deal carried over into other relations for instance the sex relations which as a privilege and a duton of riper years had to be withheld from the knowledge of the young for their advantage relations for the protection and sanctification of which many gods were invented and were set up as guardians in the nuptial chamber in Turkish this room is on this account called Haram Sanctuary and is distinguished with the same name therefore that is used for the entrance courts of the mosques thus the kingdom is a center from which radiate power and glory so the subjects a mystery full of secrecy and shame of which many after effects may still be felt among nations which otherwise do not by any means belong to the bashful Similarly, the whole world of inner conditions, the so-called soul, is still a mystery for all who are not philosophers. After it has been looked upon for endless ages as of divine origin, hope. Pandora bought the box of ills and opened it. It was the gift of the gods to men, outwardly, a beautiful, seductive gift, and called the casket of happiness. Out of it flew all the evils, living winged creatures, since they now circulate and do men injure the world. One single evil had not yet escaped from the box, and by the will of Zeus, Pandora closed the lid. And it remained within. Now, forever, man has the casket of happiness in his house and thinks he holds a great treasure. It is at his disposal. He stretches out his hand, for whenever he desires, for he does not know the box which Prandora was, the casket of evil, and he believes the ill which remains within to be the greatest blessing. It is hope. Zeus did not wish man, however much he might be tormented by the other evils, to fling away his life. But to go on letting himself be tormented again and again. Therefore, he gives man hope. In reality, it is the worst of all evils, because it prolongs the torments. the everyday standard. One will seldom go wrong if one attributes extreme actions to vanity, average ones to habit, and petty ones 